Okay, so I'm Catherine Hawes from Digital Age Lawyers. Um, you know, there's lots of questions around, you know, what happens on the 11th, obligations, there's a lot of misinformation. On the 4th of October, the government brought out um, the public health orders that will come into effect on Monday. So as of Monday, there is no LGAs of concern, there is no stay-at-home orders. It's refocused into um, whether or not people are vaccinated and what that means for business owners and, you know, the wider public. There are still, um, so when you go through the public health order, uh, first off, there is no such thing as compulsory vaccination, okay? So, um, you know, but there is consequences or there are limitations. Um, and again, I'll stress that these are short term. I would be very surprised if we are talking about the same limitations, and I'm not saying there won't be any, you know, this time next year. Um, so the public health order goes through and it, it has generalised category of business, of, of premises. So basically if you are in a premises, so Kylie, in terms of you, it's just like when you go into the shopping arcade, you've got a QR code for the arcade, then you have a QR code for each business. So my suggestion would be that you do have your own QR code um, set up. Now, as I understand it, the QR code will also link to a person's vaccination status. You are not to allow an unvaccinated person into your premises. All right, so and that, is, that is the, the go until there is a next public health order. So it's not saying you'll never be able to, but at 70%, um, there is still a large portion of the population who is still vulnerable, um, and there is a large portion who may not be able to get vaccinated, um, as opposed to those that can and choose not to. So there's a difference there. Hmm. Under the current public health order, there's no exemption for medical for not being back, you are just still at a stay at home order. If you are not, and vaxxed is not one, vaxxed is both done and immunity kicked in. Okay, so really important that people understand that all of those things around, you know, particularly around LGAs of concern, that all goes on Monday. All right, so. On Monday, all of that goes out the window. All of the construction stuff goes out the window on Monday um, about, you know, one vax or rapid, anti, rapid antigen testing is not a substitute for vaccination. This is very clear. Vaxed, not vaxed. If you're vaxed, this is what you can do. If you're not vaxed, this is what you can do. Okay. And basically, if you are not va vaxed, it is very similar to the stay-at-home orders we have been. So gyms, childcare, like they've all got to have this. Everybody really has to have their staff on premises vaxxed. And if you are doing face-to-face -face client, they need to be vaxxed as well. Um, if it's your own business, then, you know, the choice will be yours. Um, but, you, you know, you, in a sense, if you allow them onto your business premises unvaxxed, it is a $5,000 fine and it is a $1,000 fine. Now, in saying that, you know, lots of business owners have asked me, well, you know, what, ha, are we becoming the police? No, okay, that, that's not what is being asked either, okay? You have a right, you do have an obligation to ask. What the public health order says is reasonable steps. So people have asked me, well, what about if they have a fake certificate? What about, well, you know, people have fake driver's licences. You know, uh, it, it, there is, the obligation is for you to ask. And yes, they do need to either provide some, you know, the acceptable 
forms, which is your apps. Um, and then there is also a certificate because obviously some elderly people aren't working with smartphones. And trust me, I've just done it with my 82-year-old grandpa father um yeah now if he rings me one more time going i've lost it oh <laughs> so there is obvious so there are cards that people can get there's other things um but it's really important that you realize also within the public health order and i'll actually read it out because i think this is what people um need to understand is it actually says in the public health order the following. Um, it states at 2.23, um, and yes, it is rather scary that I actually know where things are in this now, um, because of, it says working from home. So an employer must, so there is still the must, you cannot force people at present back into an office. An employer must allow an employee who is fully vaccinated person to work in the employee's place of residence if it is reasonably practical to do so. And I'll come back to those words in a minute. Hmm. The other one is an employee who is not fully vaccinated person must not work at a place other than their employee's place of residence unless it is not reasonably practical to work at the place of residence. So the first thing is, if they have been working at home, then it's reasonably practical, okay? That's the first thing. Um, the second thing, for so I've actually been contacted by, um, you know, a, a, an essential, you know, business where they can't work at home. It's, it's a tanning factory. Okay, so it's not like you can tan your leather at home in your backyard, like it's a, so their question was to me, they've got one person who is not vaxxed. Now, my suggestion to them was, well, you need to then go through like a risk analysis. If you allow this person on, what are the risks? So does that mean the rest of your workforce goes home because of it? Um, so, or do you continue to stand that person? And there's a difference, I suppose, in three sections. There's those that have had one dose and waiting for another. You might classify them differently if it is reasonably practical. So I'm talking they have not been working at home, okay? So the second one, so that means that they will have their second dose within a short period of time. So you may, you know, give them something else to do or stand them down or not have them with client or customer contact. The second is those that are just never going to get vaxxed. What do you do there? Because I know the 1st of December has been mooted, but, you know, that is nowhere within a piece of legislation at present. So you do need to mm. consider that it may not be the 1st of December, Um it may be earlier, it may be later, it may be with different restrictions. Plus, you've got to consider your own workforce. The third is those for medical, and I'm assuming as we progress to the 90%, so which will be around the December, that there will be medical exemptions come in as well. But at present, it is very clear about vaxxed and unvaxxed, um, and it is a short term. This is not, you know, a continuation, but there is no way with 30% not fully vaxxed, you know, the hospitals could cope. So that's that's what this has done to, to really protect. Catherine, can I just uh, yep. clarify like a scenario? I've, I've worked with a lot of uh, manufacturing and trades-based clients, mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned the tanning factory, so that makes sense. You know, manufacturing, if they're not vaxxed and they've been working at the factory, then that will continue. Uh, well, as long, it, as, it, as, long it, as, as long as there's risk assessments, there's WHS issues, all that's all that's uh, looked at. Um, in uh, Michael's case and and others that are construction, presumably they can still go and work on construction sites because they can't do that obviously from home. Once again, as long as the safety protocols are there. Well, but that also depends whether or not the site owner will allow it as well. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so th there's there's a few nuances that mm -hmm. haven't played out, which, you know, quite frankly, will probably lead to a few more tweaks in this between now and, and you know, I would say the 25th of October when we're mooted to get to the 80%. Yeah. Um, and, in, but, you know, at present, it, it's pretty clear about Baxter Nunn, unless it is reasonably practical. Mm -hmm. So in Michael's case, if it's reasonably practical to send out another employee who is double vaxxed well then that's your answer yeah okay because the other thing is that you now also need to weigh up the fact that yes you do have to wear masks um within the office um and that's continued there it's also the fact so for us we're insisting that any clients who want face-to-face -face must be double vaxxed um we are also part of, you know, a, a wider group. So there's things about um, ensuring that staff, you know, maintain certain distances, all of that, lifts, you know. it, And that's why, you know, it may be that there's rosters put in for some of the larger companies of when people are in and out of the office. Um, but, you know, I think that the thing is that within these public health orders, I know they've mooted that there's no more lockdowns, but it actually allows for um, stay-at-home orders to come into effect on the um, health minister's say-so. So what I'm presuming is they're getting ready for spikes. So it may be, let's say, Parramatta has a spike, Parramatta gets locked down for seven days. They've already got the orders in place. They don't need to bring out a, public, a new public health order. There is all, and that shuts down all businesses in that area except for essential instantly. So um, I think it's also important that we don't get into the mindset that there, there won't be in the future, um, particularly if there's spikes in areas, lockdowns. Um, I don't think they'll probably be for the, you know, the two weeks plus two months um, or three months that we've had. But... Um, you know, they are definitely there. And that is what will be used, I think, in regional and rem areas at next week to continue on some of those where there are high spikes. So, you know, in, in terms of a business owner, I'll send around that they have put out a COVID fact sheet that I think is actually quite good and, and sensible. Um, so I'm happy to share that round, you know, because I've found... And they are difficult to find and it is difficult. I mean, mm. you can ring serve and you get three yeah, different that, answers. That'd be great, Catherine. Yeah. Because, um, what what I'd, I'd really suggest is people just, you know, take a, a deep breath. It's not it's not here for the next 10 years. Um, there'll be other things coming in, but just remember to look at the public health order rather than some, because I've seen a lot of summaries around that are just wrong, you know. Mm. Um mm. And particularly in, in probably, Michael, in your area and a few others where there's been certain rules, all of those go on Monday. All right? They're out the window. I agree with that. So with particularly the construction industry, once one rule changes, everything goes. It's like it's Christmas. Yeah. You've got, you've got 100 rules that you've got to follow, and as soon as they take away one, everyone goes, oh, sweet, everything's back to normal. And there'll be a thousand guys on site instead of the four that are allowed there. And it'll just be bedlam. Yep. And and that's where the spikes will come, like, and that's where the fines will come. So, you know, I've, I've been in meetings with, you know, um, police and, and lots of other things. They're not intentionally going out looking for breaches, okay? It's not that. But just remember that if there is, you know, a COVID outbreak, um, you know, and you do need to deep clean, you've got to pay for, like, that's on you as the business owner. Plus, you know, there could be a fine coming from it. I've also been asked, do you have a right to ask people's VAC status? Yes. It's actually a positive obligation. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. It is at present a positive obligation. If they choose not to tell you or if they say no, then that decision is then for you to say you're not allowed in. Mm. Now, if they then say, then that becomes a police matter to get rid of them. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's hope that. Um, no, but um, well, and look, I'm not suggesting for our businesses, but I'm no. thinking, you know, at Coles or Woolies, yeah. you know, um, where well, they're they're exempt in a sense because that's that's an essential. But I'm thinking at a gym, maybe you know, when they say to somebody, "No, you can't," but I pay my membership. I should, but do you know, I can see in a few areas that there there may be, but you know, it, this is generally about allowing you know business in a sense to to start, but don't think for a moment that there it won't be shut down again. Yeah, yeah. just conscious of time. Is that the people yep. have? Uh, Questions. Is there anything more to add, Catherine, or that's the guts of it? That's the guts of it, and I'll send around the the, the checklist. Um, but it it is definitely you know something that you do have a public health order behind you. Yeah. So it looks like Jeff, you've got a question, have you? Or hi, I'm Jeff's practice manager, Alison. How are you? Good. Good morning, so I Alison. have a couple of questions. We've obviously been a medical uh, practice. We're guided by uh, the dental board and our um, regulatory um, groups, the Australian Dental Association and so on. The um, guidance that we've received from them is that we can't deny care based on somebody's vaccination status, which um, is fine. We're obviously fine with that. But how, it doesn't say that we have to collect um, vaccination, evidence of vaccination when somebody enters the practice. There's no, there's no, um, so obviously there's New South Wales Health that are saying um, you have to collect vaccination status, mm -hmm. but the Australian Dental Board hasn't provided guidance around that and have also said, like I've said, you can't deny care based on someone's vaccination status. So um, where does that kind of leave us? Well, okay, so the guidance isn't the public health order. The public health order says that you must have a QR code reader and collect the information. So, Catherine, can I just clarify, when you say collect the information, it doesn't mean getting a copy. It just means verifying. You have to start verifying their cycle, vaccination cycle. status. Yeah. And, so and even though, sorry, but you've got to remember that, okay, probably, what, 85%, maybe a few more use a QR code reader that will then link to their vaccination status. Yeah, currently I don't think that does link up automatically. No, it's, it's trialled this week, and as I understand it, it should by Monday. Um, but, the, I mean, the public health order says that, you know, th this is what you need to do. So does that mean in um, in Bella Dental's case that they would uh, ask for to, to cite that and yep. regardless of whether or not uh, that person has the certificate or chooses to show the certificate, they would probably just make a note of that and then let them in anyway. Well, that that's that's a, a risk management then. Um, you know, if it is something that is not an emergency procedure, then you might consider saying to them, come back in December. And we're not allowed to do that. That's the problem. Well, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, I've actually um, spoke to my dent um, dental clinic this week and they've allowed me to make an appointment yeah. for a check-up and clean. Mm. Yep. So, I mean, it's up to the... I mean, the thing is that, you know, the, the thing to be aware of is that the, the public health order, which is... And, you know, I've got, you know... I spent most of last night talking to a very large government department that's struggling with with all of this. Um, and, you know, the public health order is clear that if you are a business, your requirement is to do the following, to have a QR code and to have vaccination status either, well, confirmed or not confirmed. Now, Jeff, in your case, then what you do with that becomes down to your own risk management and COVID safe plan. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, so look, there's no easy answers to this, but what I do say is that remember this is this is short term until we get to 90%. Like you do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think it's about doing the best we can to ensure that 
you know, the, the public health system isn't overrun. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before I finish the recording? I just think the, my main comment is, I guess, the way you listen to it on the media makes the 11th sound like it's going to be all these extravagant freedoms when, in fact, it's, it's not. Yeah, they're, they're, it's not, yeah. So a lot of people are able, will be able to go back to work, go back to the office with as long as but there, but there's some still very clear rules that have got to be, got to be followed. Oh, absolutely. And, and the other thing is that the, the clear rules um, also mean that you cannot insist upon somebody who has been working at home to come into the office. Now, in saying, I mean, and again, in saying that, you know, going forward, all the work at home issues have been put to one side. But again, if you are allowing somebody, let's say, post the 1st of December, not to come into the office, then you need to relook at your work at home policies too. Because working at home doesn't mean a substitute for childcare either. Yeah. <clears throat> right? So there's all of those things that need to be addressed once I think we get into the December period. Right, excellent. Thanks very much, Catherine. Mm. That's been fantastic. I'm sure uh, mm. our, all of our members will appreciate that. I'll, we're going to send it around to everyone. So um, thank you very much. You're welcome.